councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. It is a big idea. A new world order. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. Global governance at last. Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? As for me! to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. This is what we have in store for you for this December 20th, 2012 edition. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the media ignores numerous school massacres stopped by gun owners defending children. And Jakari Jackson sits down with David Thweet, superintendent of Harold ISD Schools, who allows his teachers to carry guns in the classroom. Plus, life is so dangerous, should we ban everything? And tomorrow, fearing the end of the world, callers flood NASA. All this and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline, communist Chinese government calls for Americans to be disarmed. Now, I can't say I'm really surprised that they would call for something like this. It is also on Drudge, so make sure that you check out the mighty Drudge report. The communist Chinese government, via its state-run media, has called for Americans to be disarmed, arguing that the Sandy Hook school massacre demands no delay for U.S. gun control. Now, the article calls on Obama to exploit the tragedy to push his gun control agenda, adding that his lame duck situation represents, quote, the best position to promote it, end quote, while blaming the National Rifle Association. Now, particularly I'm not counting on the National Rifle to come out uh, guns blazing, so to speak, to defend our rights come tomorrow. Each is on, uh, some of you are probably NRA members, but they haven't impressed me much as of late. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow when they come out. I'm really afraid that they're gonna buckle under pressure to be quite honest with you. But, uh, you know, we still have gun owners of America and, you know, other organizations fighting for your rights. So uh, stick to your guns, so to speak, and uh, hopefully we can bypass this latest storm. Next story. Media ignores numerous school massacres stopped by gun owners defending children. Let's take a look right here. One story that is repeatedly overlooked is how often firearms are used to save lives and stop senseless murders. Now, we have a complete list here. We'll start right there. On Pearl High School in Mississippi, this is back in 1997, a 16-year-old entered a school with a rifle. He killed two students, but the assistant principal retrieved a 45 caliber handgun from his glove box in his truck and kept the situation from getting any worse. We'll move on to our next one. Appalachia Law School in Virginia back in 2002, uh, the suspect arrived on campus with a handgun around 1 p.m. and immediately and immediately killed three people, two of which were killed at point blank range. Two students retrieved handguns from their vehicles and stopped the situation from getting any worse. And it goes on from there. You can take a look at the complete list in this article. But yeah, this is stuff that the media doesn't want you to hear. They don't want you to know about. They want you to know about Sandy Hook and about Columbine. And yes, those were very various, uh, very serious situations, but you also have situations like this where uh, people were able to arm themselves, defend themselves. And people always talk about, oh, I only want uh, government to have guns and, and this and that. Well, one school shooting that I guarantee you will not hear about on any mainstream outlet is that of Kent State, 
where only the government had guns and only the government killed people, unarmed people at that. Students at that school, they don't want you to know about that. They just want you to, it seems like everybody can only remember like two or three years back. They can't remember anything before that. Back, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't the original school shooting, but the first big school shooting uh, in this country was Kent State. So let's not forget that. And uh, we'll move on to our next article. Ex-ATF official's gun ends up at Mexican cartel shootout that killed Beauty Queen. Now, before we go to the article, some of you guys uh, may remember, I believe it was uh, last month, a Mexican Beauty Queen was uh, hanging out with the cartel. Why she was with the cartel, I don't know. But she was hanging out with the cartel. They came against some opposition. A shootout ensued, and she ended up dead. And they found some, uh, some weapons there, questionable weapons, one of which was from this ATF agent. Let's take a look at the article. Records show that the gun purchased in January 2001 by George Gillard, the former number two in the ATF uh, office in Phoenix, he now works at the ATF headquarters in Washington. Mr. Gillard used a fake address to purchase his weapon, which if you try that, I guarantee you, you're going to get a knock on your door. But let's keep reading on here. Another weapon found at the crime scene was traced to Urel Patino, who illegally bought more than 600 guns and is a main suspect in the controversial operation Fast and Furious. Now, we've spoken at length about Fast and Furious on this program many times. So I'm not going to go over all the details, but basically uh, ATF shipped guns and explosives into Mexico to demonize the Second Amendment. And uh, we see here Mr. Uh, Gillard. Uh, he, I'm not saying he was uh, particularly involved in the ATF Fast and Furious, but his weapon ended up there and he used a fake address. So I think that alone deserves some type of investigation. Especially, I mean, they basically uh, two time, 10 minutes away from getting your proctology exam when you go buy a gun. But I'll, uh, I'm not even going to go to my, my uh, dealings at the gun store. But anyway, we'll move on to our next article. Life is dangerous, ban everything. And this is an article from Melissa Milton where she talks about school viol violence and how you can't avoid all situations. Let's take a look. The 2011 FBI Unified Crime Report actually shows that American violence is down across the country. The number of American murders is now the lowest it has been in more than 40 years. Oh, there's Obama. Uh, I guess he had an eye itch right there. Uh, history shows that gun bans do not stop mentally disturbed people from finding ways to commit school massacres, which we saw recently with the guy uh, was in China who ran around with a knife stabbing people. He didn't have a gun. Uh, I mean, you really don't need a, a gun to kill anybody. Yes, it does make it easier if that's what your intentions are, but not everybody who goes out and buys a gun does it with the intention to, you know, hurt somebody. They may buy it for self-defense purposes, but not to be proactive in establishing violence. And the article goes on and talks about guns, it talks about knives. I don't know, maybe uh, kids, kids may bite each other at school. Do you have to take everybody's teeth out? I'm joking, of course, on that one. But... Uh, you know, the way to protect your schools and your children is not to disarm people. And coming up after the break, we will speak with Mr. David Thweet, a advocate for gun rights and also the superintendent of Herald ISD in northern Texas, where they allow teachers to carry guns in the classroom should be very interesting. So stick around for that. And speaking of the world being dangerous, David Knight was on the Alex Jones radio show today where they discussed uh, traffic stops in which two women, and I'm sure there are many more than them, but most recently, two women were... Uh, pulled over, cavity search on the side of the road. Uh, people driving by can see all what's going on. And it's getting to the point where you have, seems like you have more to fear from the people who are supposed, supposed to protect you than the actual, quote, criminals out there because you have uh, cops uh, violating your orifices on the side of the roads and TSA grabbing on your on your chest and your and you junk down there. So it's, it's getting kind of scary out there. But anyway, here's David Nice interview with uh, Alex Jones earlier today. The government ships in the majority of the drugs. The big banks launder it publicly. Then they hope your kids end up using them so they can put you in a private prison. Now, David Knight has gone over this, read over this. We're, uh, and we're also going to go over the Fourth Amendment here for people. But what do you think of the Texas Rangers? You have their quotes there because they're I supposedly oversee the state police. They're like, you know, uh, Batman, the state police are Robin. Uh, you know, they're the state investigative force over law enforcement. What do you make of their statement that we think this is reasonable? And as long as we say it's reasonable, it means it's reasonable when the real definition of a reasonable search is something entirely different. 
Well, their spokesperson is trying to walk that back a little bit. Now, this happened all the way back in July. Here we are five months later, and this is coming to light, as you said, because of discovery in the lawsuit. But uh, the spokesperson, Catherine Sessinger, said all troopers are obligated to act reasonably so as to comply with the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution as well as the Texas Constitution. Now, who could think that that was reasonable under any circumstances? And, and the problem is, is that the Constitution gives us a very objective standard for what is reasonable. And what the Supreme Court has done is to give us a subjective standard, right? The, the Constitution said that you will be protected against unreasonable searches in your person, especially first thing that they mention, because this had happened to them with British soldiers. You know, Piers Morgan's ancestors had been doing this to people, right? So they'd moved into their houses. We got a, a constitutional amendment saying, you know, troops can't move into your houses. Or have a standing army uh, domestically. Right. So they had seen the same types of things that we're seeing now. And that's why these things are in the Constitution. They violated women. Right, right. So they, they gave us an objective standard. They said it'll not be, you know, a, a reasonable search is one where you are specific about what you're looking for. You think you're going to find a crime and you go before a judge, make a case, and a judge agrees. And then you're allowed to do it. <clears throat> they should have hauled her into jail if they thought they had proof, gone before the judge. And then if they weren't right, they'd have been liable. That's right. But what happened is that our Supreme Court thinks that they can amend the Constitution. They act as if they can, and they've given us two standards. They say a reasonable search is one where did the person actually expect some degree of privacy? Well, I think the woman would expect some degree of privacy. Uh, she said, basically, they said, well, we're going to search you. She had no idea it was going to be a search like that. But then they also say, is a person's expectation uh, objectively reasonable? In other words, one that society is willing to recognize. Now, when you do that, what you've created is a sliding scale that is based on society's moral compass, which we see is being changed all the time by the media, by the movies that we watch, and by, you know, just, just what's happening in society. So now you've, you've divorced everything from, you know, this, this standard where I think a crime is being committed. They make the case before a judge, and the judge says that's okay. Now it's just about, well, what will society accept? And we can accept this. And this is really unlimited what they're pushing. Um, I got pulled over by state police about five years ago on 37 going down to the beach with my children. This is when my wife was pregnant with our third child. We only had two children then. The children were asleep. It was about eight, eight o'clock at night. And uh, the state police came over and were looking at us like we were murderers. And they were wanting to get in to our children's uh, car seats. And I said, listen here. I said, you're acting like wolves. I said, I don't like how you're looking at me. You know I don't have any warrants out. You know, they pulled me over six miles over the speed limit. I said, I said, listen, you got green stinking teeth. And I said, I promise you this. I am going to sue you, and I will make your life a living hell. You give me the ticket, and you get off my back right now, and you get that witch away from me. Because I know criminals when I see them. Mm -hmm. and, and these people were like scum. It was a man and woman, two of them. And, uh, and I mean, my, my, because usually state police pull you over. They're nice, you know, Dudley do right, just out revenue generating. Most state police have actually been nice in my experience. But when these people came up, I looked in their eyes, and I mean, they were, they were evil. And, you know, the problem is you've got predators that want these jobs, that crave power, uh, and who aren't normal people. And who, look at TSA, how many of them are pedophiles and abusers and all of this. I mean, it's it's every day they're getting arrested for pedophilia or raping women in parking lots or you know robbing people and 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 you know and and one TSA whistleblower said, oh, the average person steals like hundreds of thousands a year, and everybody I know's been robbed of the TSA. I've been robbed mm -hmm. of yeah. a, 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 of a, a Tiffany baby rattle, mm -hmm. and Dr. Pachenix had his sleeping pills robbed. I mean, they rob. Everyone I know has been robbed by the TSA. My brother-in-law had his video camera stolen out of his out of his bag. Yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, this is just a criminal force that is coming up against us, and they're protecting the criminals and promoting them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you said, first they said this was reasonable. That's why they're having to sue. Now they're walking it back because of the outrage. But I got to be honest, man. Uh, I am actually now scared, and 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 not scared in the way of. I'm scared of the police. I'm scared of myself because this enters a whole other dimension with, with daughters and people. I mean, I don't know about living in this country with my children, but there's nowhere to run is the problem when they're going to grow up and be raped by police. Right. My son, we went to see Red Dawn. And of course, the hallmark of tyranny imposed on the people is the roadside block where they inspect everybody. But they weren't going in people's pants. They weren't doing the TSA type of stuff. And my son said, you know, the North Koreans treat them better than our TSA treats people. You know, it's hard to get 
scared in a movie when you know they can't recreate the same kind of tyranny that we see in real life. And see, exactly, but in North Korea, they don't have to go in your pants because they want to just disappear you, it happens. Mm -hmm. The problem here is, as I've said, it's, it's a paradox. The old republic's still there to an extent, shot up, rotting, falling apart, but it's quite a wreckage. It's like a mountain range, mm -hmm. okay? And, and we breathe life into it. And the phoenix is kind of getting up. It's starting to flame on if we just get it going. See, people die. Republics can be reborn. But we have to admit it's pretty much dead and resuscitate it with the shock paddles. But if we won't admit it's dead and get the shock paddles out, I mean, we're, we're flatlining right now. Mm -hmm. On every level, we've gone into the flatline. And if we don't admit that and, and, and ask for God to strike us with that lightning of liberty to wake us up, we're dead. Yeah. And, and, and then it is evacuation time or revolution time. And more and more people are talking like that, prominent people I mean, who know history. This isn't a game. But just to look at how they've hired police that will follow any order, who have low IQs, who will do things like this, uh, it is so frightening. But there's a total tyranny. If you look at the parallel tyranny, it's the worst the world's ever seen. The worst spying, the worst control, the worst weaponization. The, I mean, the most, the C Hitler tortured people, but they didn't admit it. Mm -hmm. They come out and go, yeah, we, we, we sexually torture people. We torture their kids. And the media is like, well, that's how you get tough. I, I mean, it, it's if they're able to fully capsize liberty and then flip in this pure evil, it's going to be something like the world's never seen. So what's your take on my statement of these, uh, of, of these two rails, this, this paradox? Yeah, well, you know, I talked to David Simpson here. He's a state representative who's introduced a bill to uh, rein in the TSA. He introduced the one last time. Right, right. And, and, and he's focusing on these sexual assault issues, especially now this one has also added another uh, clause that protects children from being separated from their parents because of what happened to an autistic boy. But, you know, while the TSA is doing this, and actually, you know, whether it's by training or by uh, imitation or by design, now the state... Highway Patrol is doing this to people. I mean, we need to have some, some it's, it's not just enough to protect us from the TSA. This is getting pervasive throughout all law enforcement. And if we don't stop it with the TSA, if we don't stop it with local law enforcement, it is going to be pervasive with everybody. I mean, it, it's just, you know, it's just amazing to me that people would, would stand for this. Uh, they're going to have to, people are going to have to stand up. They're going to have to take their rights back first as jurors. And we're also going to have to put a lot of pressure on some state representatives because they're not as corrupt as the federal representatives. And we've got some good people in state. Well, they unanimously, after Simpson brought it forward, passed it in the House. The Senate had all the votes. But David Dewhurst came out and killed it. Yep. And the feds said, we will have an armed blockade with F-16s. And it was reported by the Dallas Morning News like, well, the feds threatened blockade with the Air Force. Mm -hmm. a, a, not a, a embargo. I say call that bluff. Yeah. Okay. And, and of course, why did the House do this? They're all flying. And I had a whole bunch of state reps and senators on where they would describe their wives, their daughters. Well, one state rep had his daughter disrobed. They, they. I mean, mm -hmm. they've had cases in Texas where the TSA then asked the women for dates. These are such pervs mm -hmm. that, that they've settled. Where on video they pull the woman's bra off and are going, "You are hot," and three men get around her and ask her for dates. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is how stupid they are, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to be really dumb to be around body scanners all day that are admittedly giving the, them cancers. That's right. These are guys that are willing to die. Yeah, willing to die to be able to grope people. Mm -hmm. So they are. Uh, well, this is what every tyranny's done. It creates a subgroup of goons that are outside law that are just federally licensed, and then the other police convert to them as the standard. I mean, how many times have I talked about, listen, the TSA is now certifying, they're the, quote, inspectors over the police at these highway checkpoints. Absolutely. They're, so their standards are now what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's by fiat or whether they're just training the people. Well, hopefully something's going to change with it because David Simpson is really committed to this, and there are a few people with, with backbone that are going to fight this. Uh, Talked to uh, a representative in Michigan who just came up with an anti-NDAA bill that passed unanimously in the Michigan House there. So at the at the state level, there are some good, honest men with backbone and, and women, and uh, hopefully we'll have enough of them. But, you know, it, what he said, the guy in, in Michigan said, uh, he couldn't propose an NDAA bill that was actually going to prohibit and interpose against the feds. What he was going to do was keep the state from assisting them, as we're talking about, you know. Yeah, and they've done that in 800 cities for illegal aliens illegally. Mm -hmm. uh, but but, but the, the states could ignore the tyranny legally on the constitutional grounds. Because mm -hmm. the feds are only supposed to protect the borders, coin the money, and have a navy. They do everything they're not supposed to do, though. Right. Right. You know, my issue is, 
What do you think you do if you're there with your wife and your children and they get you out on the side of the highway and it's not enough to search your vehicle and they go, okay, I'm going to stick my hands down your pants now. Or they don't even tell you. They, I mean, they'll kill you is the thing. Right. I mean, I mean, you, I guess you let them rape you or they'll kill you. That's right. Well, part of it is, you know, one of the other things that's disturbing is how they're using these tasers as electronic whips to get everybody into submission. And that's what would wind up. They would wind up tasering you. Well, no, they admit that. that. Yeah. They, and if you resist that, they kill you. Yeah. They, they, the, they say, no, it's pain compliance. Yeah. Tortures here in America. Absolutely. Man, I tell you, people think being subservient will make things go easier on them. That's not the American spirit. We, we have lost the American spirit. Can you imagine if the founders were told, because not even the Redcoats did, I mean, they would, well, they had Redcoats that did abuse some women and they would always end up dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine the founders that they had a crystal ball or looking down from heaven that they could see women with, with people shoving, I mean, you see that woman at one point just right into her body. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is off the charts. I mean, there's no way I would involuntarily strike back. Mm -hmm. And that's terrorism now. Right. And, and that's what's surprising about it is that that, that behavior is like the, the response we get from the highway patrol is, well, we're going to have to look at this to see if it was reasonable under the circumstances. We're going to have to look at this to see, and the Supreme Court says, does society think that that's reasonable? Well, they're conditioning us to think that anything is reasonable. And that's the world we live in right now. And if you have a problem with it, there's something wrong with you. And how, how often will people give up their rights for quote security, I would not feel secure living in a country where I could be pulled over and given a cavity search on the side of the road. And taking somebody to a private room doesn't make it any better how they done it in a squad car or behind a tree. That doesn't make it any better. And I see people on the internet, well, well, if you don't like it, that's something wrong with you. Why, why is there something wrong with me? Because I don't want my body to be violated. Women, why would you want to be subjected to something like that? Uh, and, and keep in mind, the lady, in that video didn't even change her gloves. She went uh, back to front. Uh, I'm sure ladies know that's a no-no. And then she proceeded to switch other, switch victims, I'll, I'll call it what it is. She switched victims, molested the other lady, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened to her. I don't think she, uh, the officer had any stern type of punishment. But anyway, that's, that's the world we live in. It seems like it's about the end times. Uh, it might as well be with stuff like that going on. But anyway, end times are coming, supposedly. I don't personally believe in it. Uh, people say that, oh, you crazy conspiracy theorists, you must believe in, uh, in the end of the world. No, I mean, will the world end someday? Yeah, but I don't think that some guy, uh, you know, prophesied it years ago, some Mayan guy, nothing against Mayan people, but I just don't particularly believe in that. But some people do, and they've been blowing up the phones over at NASA, uh, and I'm right there pretty... Pretty looking forward to uh, December 22nd, so let's take a look at the article here. If there's one government agency really looking forward to December 22nd, it's NASA. The myth may might have been originated by the Mayan calendar, but in the age of the internet and social media, it's pro proliferated online, raising questions and concerns among hundreds of people around the world who have turned to NASA for answers. I'm pretty sure it's more than hundreds, but maybe that's just the amount of calls they can take. The questions range from myth, Will a rogue planet crash into Earth? Is the sun going to explode? And will there be three days of darkness? Now, you know, I guess everybody has their various sources of information. The thing I really can't get is this giant planet. Uh, I thought somebody may have spotted a giant planet hurling towards us by now, but hey, I guess it could appear in the next few hours. I'm not really sure what time zone it's supposed to arrive in, so I don't know, maybe it, you'll see it before I do, but. Uh, it's, oh, man, it's uh, pretty silly uh, as far as I'm concerned. But, hey, even if I am wrong, the uh, Internet, you won't be around tomorrow to make fun of me for being wrong. We'll move on to our last story. Confirmed sections of Gotham renamed Sandy Hook in latest Dark Knight release. Now, before we, hold on, Marcus, before we go to the, to the screen, uh, we had a researcher. Some of you guys have seen this over the Internet the past few days. I guess since the, the Dark Knight movie has come out and people have had time to, uh, Dark Knight Rises has come out and people have time to look at it more. But there's a section on a map in the movie that uh, it's called Sandy Hook. And as you can see in the film, somebody blatantly points to that particular spot. Is it coincidence? I don't know. One of our researchers came to me the other day and he's like, hey, what do you think about this? And I was like, eh, I mean... Sandy Hook on a map, but then he presented me with this information and I gave him some of my insight. And then I became uh, somewhat of a believer that this may be more than a coincidence. So let's take a look at the full screen here. 
So there you go, you see the, the headline right there. In the latest film, the southern section of Gotham is without a doubt called Sandy Hook. However, according to our research, this section was renamed somewhere between the first film and the last. Now, if we can go to the, uh, to the maps, if we can tab over. Okay, so we see the first one right here. That is South Hinkley. I believe that was uh, what the section was called in the first Batman movie, Batman Begins, if we can tab over. We can see now if we can scroll. Yeah, there it is. Sandy Hook. Uh, that's what it was called in the latest in the latest uh, incarnation of the Batman movie, the one with Bane. And you can actually see circled on the Sandy Hook. That's the football stadium that actually blew up. And if we can tap to the next. OK, now you see right there. Tri Corner. Now, Tri Corner is the one that struck my struck my memory because I remembered in the uh, they made a animated movie to bridge the gap between Batman Begins in the Dark Knight. And this particular animated film was called Gotham Knight. And in this movie, you know, like I said, first I was a little skeptical when our guy came to us with this, but then I saw that map said Tricorner on it. And I remember somebody in the movie say the word words Tricorner, and now on the most recent map of the one in the Dark Knight Rises, Tricorner has been replaced with Sandy Hook. And from what I can tell, there there is no tri-corner on the most current map. So we'll play this audio video clip for you, and then you can judge for yourself. Let's go to the video. Sergeant De La Razio says Maroney's guys are gunning for the Russian lieutenant. He says it's going down in tri-corner, probably tonight. So there you go. You know, it was, that was official tie-in. You know, people say, that's a cartoon. It's official tie-in. Christopher Nolan was a producer on it and all that stuff. It's official tie-in to the Batman franchise, his Batman franchise. So I don't know. I'm not saying Chris Nolan, I'm not putting a finger on anybody in particular, but I'm saying that's, that's a pretty big coincidence. And speaking of coincidences, we'll go now to our quote of the day. This is a quote from the most recent Batman movie by Commissioner Gordon. Let's take a look. You're a detective now, son. You're not allowed to believe in coincidence anymore. So if that reigns true, uh, it's more than the coincidence that uh, Sandy Hook happened to be in there. And I believe that somebody said there's also Aurora somewhere in the movie. I can't confirm that. I haven't looked into that. I barely looked into this. But uh, something interesting something definitely definitely interesting so anyway stay tuned after this break we'll be back with an interview with the superintendent of herald isd a school where they allow teachers to uh, carry firearms on campus should be very very interesting but in the meantime if you like this broadcast and you like to see us uh, you know grow and thrive check out prisonplanet.tv get yourself a subscription a uh, new site you can see it right there clean slick all the good stuff on there. You have Alex's rants, you have movies, you have the ebooks, the Alex Jones show, the nightly news, whatever you want to do, it's on there. So definitely take a look at that. And also check out the InfoWars shop. Many great uh, products there. If you're looking for, you know, what to get the Patriot in your family or somebody you want to become a Patriot, check out the Alex Jones Everything Special. You can see it right there. It is 18 movies, one eight movies for $100, 99 95. You can see the uh, suggested retail price is nearly $400. You can get this for $100. And it includes Alex's latest film, Strategic Relocation with Joel Skousen. So definitely think about that. It's not, it's not what it is every day. So definitely be sure to take a look at that if that's something you're interested in because it is a limited time offer. So anyway, we'll be back after this break. I think we have a special piece about uh, Ben Bernanke, if I am correct. So we'll play that and I'll be right back with the superintendent of Herald ISD. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is David Thweet, superintendent for Herald ISD in Northern Texas. We'll be talking to him about uh, teachers carrying firearms in the classroom. He joins us now via Skype. Thanks for joining us, David. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Now, before we get into uh, the teachers at your district carrying firearms in the classroom, at least being able to have that option, uh, this recent shooting, the Sandy Hook, what was your first thoughts when you heard about that last week? Yeah, I was sick. I mean, you know, nobody with any amount of humanity can can hear that kind of thing and, and just not be saddened uh, that, that somebody would have the uh, the evil uh, intent to be able to hurt, you know, little kids like that. I just I just couldn't believe it. Um, it was very heartbreaking. Right. Now, speaking of teachers carrying firearms in the classroom, uh, how long has that been allowed in your district and what actually prompted your decision to do that? 
Well, we we passed the policy in October of 2007, and we, we have passive security. We have the cameras. We have the electronic uh, magnetic door, exterior doors, and, and uh, restricted access. The two things caused it. The, the first one was October of 2006 with the Pennsylvania Amish shooting. That was a milk delivery man uh, who broke in and, and, and uh, caused that, uh, those, those deaths. We would have, that could have gotten past our security. We would have let him in the door. The other thing that happened was in April of 07, and that was, of course, Virginia Tech. Right. And what was disturbing about that was that, uh, you know, their plan was to lock the doors and, you know, and hide, and uh, that didn't stop him. He uh, was able to shoot those uh, doors open, and then, uh, what, 60 um, casualties and 30-some-odd dead? Right. That was very disturbing. Every one of the plans in the United States and schools, emergency plans, are to lock the doors and hide the kids. Well, that was disturbing to us because we're 30 minutes from law enforcement. We had no way to protect ourselves, and there wasn't anybody around to take care of us. We were our first responders. Right. I came up with a plan, and the plan, you know, has been on the news a lot. It's pretty self-explanatory. We, they have to have a CHL. We uh, approve them. Uh, the board approves them individually. We undergo some extra training, and then we use frangible ammunition, which you know breaks apart of when it hits hard objects right. to, to avoid ricochet. So, but the advantage of our plan is, is that we have multiple people within the school, within the building, that can respond. We don't just have one. You know, every plan out there is a, is a security guard. Well, what happens when he goes to the dentist? What happens when he has the flu? Right. What happens when he, when, he, when he goes to lunch, for crying out loud? You see, every one of these things is predictable and targetable. And if you can take that target out, you know, these, these shootings will continue. You've got to have, first of all, like our plan, uh, personnel anonymity. Nobody knows who has them. You're going to come to our school? You want to do damage? You are going to get some surprises. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. Now, uh, I guess you have an anonymity. Uh, do you just have an estimate about how many teachers carry or personnel carry in your schools? Yeah, we, we don't release that information. Okay, I, I would just fine. say that it's that it's uh, sufficient. You know, okay. uh, we we need redundancy. You know, and um, so if any individual uh, happens to be uh, you know uh, uh, taken out in, in an attack. Uh, they'll be back up. Right. And I definitely respect it, not trying to give away your, sure. your trade secrets. Now, I remember back when I was in school, it seems so long ago, but it probably wasn't. Uh, I remember our plan, as you spoke about, was to duck and hide and pretend like nobody was there in the middle of the school day. Yeah. You know, and, and it's uh, and it never made sense to me. Even one of my teachers, I remember, I'm not going to say her name because I think she still works there. She said, hey, if anybody ever does attack the school, of course, this is after Columbine and all that. She said, I'm going to bust out one of those windows. Anybody wants to come with me can come with me because <laughs> because the plan was to lock the door and hide, turn out the lights and, you know, line up against the wall and hope that you didn't get shot. And, you know. You know, you're at midday school time. Somebody knows that you're there. You can't hide and act like nobody's in the building. Yeah, I mean, you need you need some type of plan. So now this plan, I guess, is working for your district. Do you think it's uh, the teachers carrying is something that could work nationwide? Yeah, I do. I mean, right off the bat, what we know about active shooters, they're not going where there's resistance. That's what we know about them. You know what? So if every school has resistance, they're not going there. You know, but you know what? This wasn't necessary. We caused this trouble. This idea of making schools gun-free zones was somebody's brainstorm and, and, and it was a stupid one. The idea of disarming and making some people basically unprotected across the nation was, was, was asinine at best. And uh, so all we're doing is responding to the situation and trying to fix what 22 years ago occurred. Right, that's exactly right. Now, do you have any kind of specifications on what type of firearms your, uh, your staff can carry, anything that they can't carry? Well, generally, we have some, some guidelines on that so that we can, you know, share ballistics and stuff like that, and then they need to be significant. So we, we do have, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we have uh, significant firepower. Okay. And you talked about concealed, hair, uh, excuse me, concealed, concealed carry training. Excuse me. Uh, do you have any other type of specialty training that your teachers need to go through before they're allowed to carry on campus? Yeah, we, we, we have um, some significant, I uh, will just call it that, and it mainly has to do with accuracy. We also do some room clearance, and we also do, you know, some hostage-type situations. And, 
but mainly accuracy. That's the one thing we need to have. And I, I think that was borne out in the, in the, the recent San Antonio sh- uh, shooting. I guess everyone's heard about that in right. the San Antonio theater or whatever, when an off duty uh, uh, deputy uh, had her gun and, and, and shot the guy with one shot, you know, and, and that's very helpful. Uh, whenever you're able to uh, to neutralize a threat uh, with very little firepower. Right. Now, recently we've heard a lot about uh, regulations on firearms. We've heard Obama talk about it. We've heard about uh, Mary Bloomberg talk about, uh, you know, uh, semi-automatic weapons. I'm guessing maybe one or two of your, of your staff carries a semi-automatic. And, of course, referring to the shooter, he had a semi-automatic rifle. You yourself, uh, getting, maybe getting away from the schools, do you see any need for restrictions on firearms of any type here in the no. U.S.? No, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think they have read the Second Amendment. I know they haven't. Right. You know, and, and this, is, this, is what's, this is what's causing all of this. I'm sorry. If they don't like the Constitution, I think they should go to Russia. Or somewhere else, but the, the North problem, Korea, as, as we found out, he's fundamentally changing America, and this is what they want. And I've heard people say just outright, you know, that the Constitution's outdated. No, it's not. And it does work, and it can work. And and you know what? You take away your freedoms, and uh, you're never getting them back. Right. So you don't think anything like uh, we've heard a lot of people talk about. Uh, nobody needs, uh, you know, a black. A military style rifle to hunt, or they don't need X amount of uh, rounds in a in a magazine. What do you say to people who say things like that? Yeah, don't tell me what to do. Uh, don't tell me what I don't need. You know, I mean, what I, again? I I guess I don't really understand the. Well, I know what the mindset is. They think that guns are evil. Period. Right. They want to come up with excuses. That's all they're doing with all of this. They keep on coming up with excuses that I have to have a need in order to have my freedom. You know, uh, well, are we going to start restricting uh, certain types of speech? That's next, or it already has. Are we restricting certain types of religious practices? We pretty much have, haven't we? We need right. to stop this stuff. You know, at some point in time, somebody's going to have to say, wait a second, why am I offending you by buying this weapon? Right. You know, unless I go out and, and, and for some reason, you know, I think I've heard Ted Nugent say this. You know, you drop me out of space on Earth unless you have a reason to, to, to take away my freedoms. You know, if I've been a felon or something, I should not have any restrictions on my freedoms. Right. And just as we've seen, the, the t- attacks aren't always with a gun. I believe it was in China. The gentleman slashed, uh, I think it was 20, 22 kids and staff with yeah. a knife. Yeah, I don't remember the exact number. It happened in London as well at a daycare center. Right. And uh, those types of things happen. And when you talk about you know, drug, gun control, they're talking about murders. Russia, Brazil, uh, Mexico have higher murder rates than we do. They're not, they have no guns allowed. Right. That's exactly right. But people don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about all these shooters who are hopped up on these uh, different type of these different types of drugs and all these other factors that could have played into it. And we hear the excuse, oh, well, he, uh, he had a gun that he took from his mom. Well, first of all, the guy... I guess you could say stole the gun from his mother, took it to a, a school zone, which uh, was two, what, two felonies already just walking in the door with a gun and then yeah, decided to open about, fire. You care about the laws. You right. Know. Again, you make a law, only the law abiding citizens will not break the law. That's exactly right. Because, I mean, if you impose uh, clip size or uh, weapon type, that's just for law abiding citizens not to carry this thing. This guy obviously wasn't caring about the law. But even before he shot a shot, just taking his his firearm to the school, he obviously wasn't, you know, abiding by the law. Exactly. You know, and that's what that's what's just, again, ridiculous about some of these arguments. They also say that guns kill kids and they're in their their data. Eighteen kids a day are killed by by guns. Well, their kids go from zero to 19. You know, disaggregate that data. When you get around to 12 and 13, you're talking about gang murders. That's right. exactly what they're talking about. They're yeah. not talking about that. And besides, it's a tool. And what we know about tools, you know, and, and another another argument for the teachers. Oh, the teachers are going to shoot the kids. Oh, I can't believe that on 364 days out of the year, you know, teachers are wonderful. Oh, they're wonderful. We, we couldn't do without them. They're heroes. And then on day 365, suddenly they're going to be killing kids. Right. Well, I'm sorry. If a, kid, if a teacher wants to be that idiotic, they've got scissors, pencils, scalpels in our biology lab. They should be just, there should be blood running in the streets if teachers are that maniac, uh, maniacal. So this is a problem. 
Right. We just come up with stupid arguments. They have stupid arguments, and that's all they really have. They just they they they, they misinterpret data, or they have again. They just sneer at it and say it's a stupid idea, and they just go at ad hominem attacks. Right, and I remember when I was in school, it was anything that could be used as a weapon was a weapon. I'm not sure if you guys have that rule down here in Texas, but I mean, you could beat somebody to death with a book if you wanted to, sure. if you, if you were that motivated. Fist, you know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I definitely appreciate your time, Dave. I know you've been up since early this morning. Do you have any uh, any closing comments? No, we, we we just need to do something in our country. And uh, we need to protect our kids. I mean, they are valuable. We, we spend a lot of money protecting our money. We don't spend very much money protecting our kids, and we need to do that. Plus, we just need to use common sense. And we also need to put our biases and our, our fears aside and do what's right. All right, David Thweet, Superintendent Harold ISD. Definitely appreciate your time, sir. Absolutely. Glad to be with you. All right, thanks. All right, I like that, guys. So if you don't like it, you can go to Russia. <laughs> so, uh, very well-spoken guy. He's been busy. I, man, I, I contacted him earlier this week and had to wait for my day Thursday to talk to him. He's been all over the news. I've been seeing him everywhere. But I'm definitely glad we had a chance to get him and uh, talk to him. And he had very, uh, very good arguments for, for where I stand. Uh, he said all their teachers go through training, concealed uh, carry licenses, uh, additional training on top of that. They have specialty ammunition that uh, collapses when it hits its target so it doesn't you know, go through walls or people or whatever else. So very good arguments. I'm sure some people won't like it, but we don't really care. Uh, if you like this broadcast, you need to take a look at prisonplanet.tv, the new site up. Uh, a lot of people have been working very hard to get it up and running. Uh, it's newer, it's cleaner, slicker. Uh, it has better categories. You guys can take a look. You can see the the most recent shows right there. Oh, there's a uh, Rob Dew uh, with his uh, <laughs> his ponytail, Robin Seagal, as we like to call him. Anyway, take a look at that, and also check out the Infowars shop. Many great products there. The I don't know if we still have uh, Obama wants your guns. Do we still have that? Is that sold out? No. Okay, that's sold out. So I don't know if it's ever going to be back, but. If you can't get that, you can get that right there. Mass murderers agree, gun control works. And yes, they do agree, and you can see it right here. I need to start wearing this out next time I go to the store. I went to, this, I went to three different stores uh, this past week trying to find an AR-15 rifle. And people are like, oh, you're out buying guns after the school shooting. I was planning to buy that gun way before the school shooting happened. I just now got the cash to do it. Went out there to buy the shelves or bear. You cannot buy a magazine. You cannot buy a gun. The only thing they have, the only thing they had left were like 22 rifles and shotguns, and that was every store I went to. And I went to some, you know, big chain stores. So anyway, uh, they agree. They don't want you to have your guns, and Obama agrees as well. So you can get this, get this shirt. Give it out to the uh, Obama supporter in your home. Uh, and then, well, I gave the don't take a shirt to somebody and. I'll see if they still think that Obama's not going to come for their guns. But anyway, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. Definitely want to thank the great crew. Uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Threet up there in Herald ISD and you, the viewers, as well. So if the end of the world does come, uh, I'm not sure what time zone that's going to be. This may be the last thing that you see. So if I'm the last person you ever see in your life, I definitely want to thank you for supporting InfoWars and all that you do. And I'm Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you maybe tomorrow. Have a good night.